Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan. In this video, how to choose an Ishin teapot. Um, Ishin teapot. Uh, Ishin teapots are uh, the pinnacle of the Chinese teaware. If you want, uh, um, you can see them as an item that is very uh, venerated and at the same time controversial. Uh, it is maybe um, like poor for tea. So Ishin teapot is for tea, where what poor is for tea is an item that is affected by uh, mystery and uncertainty. Now why? Uh, simply because uh, everyone that is into Ishin teapot seems to have a different opinion about the Ishin teapots and they also pretend and insist that that is the absolute truth. Now, in this video I won't advocate my personal truth, I simply would like to share with you my Ishin uh, collection, my private Ishin collection, tell you why I choose that Ishin teapot and maybe in this way inspire uh, some of you that were uh, thinking about purchasing one. Now, before we start, there is an important point we have to make. An Asian teapot is both a tool and an artwork. And these two things simply go together. It is an item that is uh, uh, seek by collectors everywhere in the world and is exposed at the museum both in China and in the Western world. But at the same time, is an item that was made for brewing tea. It means that you cannot think at the Asian teapot without uh, separating both the utilitarian and the artistic value. Both goes together. Um, now, Ishin teapot. Uh, uh, there are several criteria that uh, I use to, um, to select uh, my Ishin teapot. I would say that the first and more important one is the material. After the material, something that I really look into it uh, um, is uh, the artistic um, appeal, uh, how, how I like the teapot, just for the sake of liking it. Then, uh, after that, there is the ergonomic and functionality of the pot itself. The four, fourth uh, uh, point, I would say, is uh, the finishing. Uh, then, of course, the tea that I would like to use, it, to, to use with the teapot. And at the very least, uh, there is uh, the production method if it was made in a mold or if it was completely handmade we, um, and uh, uh, if, uh, which is the artist that made it. Uh, now, uh, as you see here, I put those two uh, last uh, uh, item, uh, the production method and the artist between brackets because actually those are not really parameters that I use to select the teapot if I'm going to use them like I'm doing uh, with this one. All right. Now, um, as some of you know, I live now in the US and uh, a few months back when I moved here, I had to leave all my teapot back in Europe. There was not enough space in my luggage. So I had to choose only one teapot to take with me and I choose this one. This is uh, the teapot with, with, uh, with which I steep uh, um, raw pour shampoo. And uh, I took this one because it's simply the one that I like the most and the one that I use the most. Now. Um, when, uh, uh, when was that? A few, a few weeks back, at the beginning of May, I was traveling in China and Caroline and myself went to Ixing and uh, had the chance also to meet the artist that made this teapot. And we were lucky enough that we were able to find a teapot exactly like this one, also for Nanoshan. So maybe by the time you're looking at this video, a teapot like this will be available on our shop. But then during that trip, I um, selected other teapots. So um, at the beginning, uh, at the end of April, I had only one teapot in the US and now, and now I have seven of them. This one here, the largest one was actually a present and therefore I'm not really going to um, speak about it because today I would like to uh, share with you why I chose my Asian teapot. I wasn't able to uh, to choose this one, it was just a present. And uh, as for the other, uh, let's see uh, where can we start uh, with. I think I will start with the small one, uh, maybe actually with the yellow one here. All right, uh, so this teapot is uh, a Duanni, uh, this is the name of the clay, and in particular, is a sesame Duanni. It's called sesame because uh, uh, maybe you can see in the picture that uh, there are. Uh, tiny dots on uh, the surface, dark dots, and these dark dots 
made Duanni to be a sesame Duanni. So it's just a particular kind of Duanni. It is mold made, so it's not uh, handmade. And I use it for shampoo. Now, why did I choose this teapot? Actually, almost all the parameters that I've listed before matters. First of all, we said material. This is a very dense clay. And for me, it's extremely important that for my shampoo, I have a teapot that is not too porous and where the clay is really, really compact because uh, um, I want that uh, the Ishin teapot just smooth down the very um, sharp, bitter edges of those young shampoo from the side of Yunnan, but without affecting the crispness and the complexity of the leaves. And this is exactly what this teapot does. Then I liked also a lot uh, the teapot itself, so if you want artistic appeal, because uh, it is a shape that is not very common, it was uh, invented by the artist that made it, and uh, uh, I think it's a great combination between a round central body and uh, the spout and the handle actually have a polygonal section, so they are more linear and geometrical. But nonetheless, these geometrical aspects and uh, the central round teapot harmonize very well together. And then there is this part of the detail here that uh, you can see there is uh, a um, lotus with eight petals engraved in the bottom, and this lotus is uh, embracing the Hot body itself. On top of that, there are very tiny uh, decorations that are not kitschy at all, like there are some decorations here on the bottom of the lid that I really like a lot. And uh, last but not least, uh, is also very functional and uh, ergonomical. Because uh, let's see if I can show it to you. There are some leaves inside. But I hope uh, you can see actually inside uh, there are there is a, a embedded filter and in the filter there are um, one two three four uh, eleven holes which makes uh, uh, the flow of the pour very smooth. And as I said, uh, this is actually mold made, it is not completely handmade, and why? Because honestly, I don't care. What really matters for me is the material, and if I have to spend my money, I prefer to invest them in the quality of the material rather than in the time that the artist spent to do the teapot. All right, that's um, about my um, shampoo ishing. So I will move this apart and I will take um, another one to show it to you, and these, uh, uh, this one here. A very tiny uh, Asian teapot that I choose actually for his uh, artistic appeal and for the tea I would like to use it with. First of all, some uh, data. This is a Juni or a Hongni. I don't know which of the two. I forgot because at that time it was not so important for me. And uh, um, it is a uh, mold made. I use it for uh, Danzong uh, Oolong. Why? Because uh, the clay is extremely compact and dense, even more than the previous one, because uh, the grains are even smoother and smaller. It's almost uh, probably was like a powder. And if you really uh, look uh, uh, close to it, it's really, really um, smooth, extremely smooth. And this is for me important when uh, I brew uh, Danzong because they are not very bitter, I don't want to smooth them at all and I really want all the complexity and the aromatic power to come into my mouth. So now say that, uh, which are other um, important uh, aspects of this teapot? Uh, the, um, um, the shape is something that I really like at the first glance and is also very convenient because it has this wider belly here so uh, the big leaves of Danzong can fit inside without uh, the teapot being too big. And it's important that it's small uh, because, as you might have seen in another video, um, Danzong has to be brewed in a very, very small uh, uh, pot. It can be a teapot, it can be a guy one, but if you brew in uh, uh, Chaozhou, Gongfucha style, then you really want a very tiny teapot. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about this one here. So I will move uh, to the next one.
So this one here is uh, um, a teapot that uh, I have been using for uh, white tea. Um, it is made of uh, Juni, uh, also in a mold, and uh, um, I use it, say, for, uh, for white tea. Now, why? First of all, why I choose it? Here, in this case, I simply choose it because of the material. I, I know the artist. Uh, we have uh, um, already some people from this artist uh, on the Nan Ocean shop, and we have more than will uh, come in the next uh, months. And uh, she put a lot of stress in the material. In a time frame between 12 and 20 years ago, she bought large quantities of very rare and precious uh, material that she, uh, that she is still stocking today and she's using to produce her uh, teapot. And uh, it has also a very smooth, uh, um, a very smooth uh, flow because, uh, uh, well, I will show it to you. It's extremely smooth and uh, um, there are no drops fall down the spout. Another important characteristic that is nice of this teapot is that it has a round strainer in it. And it is like a dome shaped strainer with a lot of holes. Uh, let's see if you can see it. And, uh, this uh, uh, strainer um, is important to allow a very smooth flow. Now, I would use a dome-shaped uh, um, strainer only for teapots that are very tall or very large, uh, because in this way you don't disturb the convection of the water inside and the way that the taste of the leaves uh, dissolves into water. If the teapot is too tiny, like this one, a domed, um, a round strainer would not be good. But maybe uh, this is an argument for a future video. So let's move to the next one. And here we go. This, uh, uh, this is a little bit special. Uh, it was uh, in, uh, uh, at the end of April, it was already May, I don't remember. We were with, on the tea tour, on the Nanoshan tea tour in China with uh, 14 customers. And we brought our customer to the... Um, uh, to the um, um, atelier of uh, the nephew of uh, Zhang Rong. And Zhang Rong uh, is arguably uh, the most famous uh, Yixin teapot maker of the last century. She passed away, but uh, his nephew is still uh, producing uh, a teapot today using the same tool that she was using and he has learned from, uh, from her. And this teapot was uh, uh, designed by his nephew, so it's really he made the sketch that uh, uh, on which uh, then um, the production of this uh, teapot was made and is completely handmade. Uh, on top of that, what is very peculiar is that uh, uh, the, um, it's not only an own design and a unique design, also the clay is very peculiar. It is a mix of the four different uh, clays and uh, this blend of clays with uh, the major component being uh, Jiao Poni is uh, uh, resulting in uh, uh, tiny dots, tiny bright dots on the brown clay, as you uh, can see in this picture. All right, and now let's move on to the last uh, two items. I took them both because uh, they are both made by the same artist. Uh, Carolyn and I have visited this artist uh, um, in Ishing during our, during our trip and uh, last May, and um, actually we, we felt in love uh, with the quality of the material. Uh, I believe uh, this is the first tip uh, that I really buy only for the material. Now let's speak uh, shortly about them. This one, uh, which is black, is quite unusual. It's actually a Juni, which is a brown clay, but uh, the clay was mixed with ashes and uh, uh, resulted this in dark uh, black color. But if you see at it, and the way that uh, is, um, um, it's very glossy, let's say, and very dense. So the quality of the Juni was uh, really, really high. And this one, this is um, very special. So first of all, this is the teapot for which I spend most money um, in my life. Um, I bought it because uh, uh, it's clay, uh, Zeni, 
that is very very difficult to find in this quality is so compact and so hard that when you when you have it in your hands it feels like you have a stone and what is interesting about uh, these two pots is that uh, both are the pot that uh, the respective artists use in their atelier so they sell many other pots, but they've chosen this one. As for this one, it is used by the artist for white pour. I use it for pour. Um, I taste it with white tea. It certainly goes well. Um, and uh, it might also work fine for uh, green tea. I don't like personally to steep green tea in Ishing. I prefer porcelain. But for those of you that are into it, it uh, would certainly be um, definitely a good choice also for green tea. And this one is used by the artist for steeping uh, black tea, the local Ishing uh, Hongcha. All right, uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. It's pretty much it. This is what I wanted to tell you about my collection. Uh, I hope uh, you appreciated that. And uh, if you like and enjoyed uh, watching, please uh, click on the uh, like button below and subscribe our channel by clicking on the tiny guy one that is on the right corner of uh, the screen and um, you know the more uh, subscriber we get the more video you get thank you very much again and bye bye